We have to give up our hope for a better past. Oh my god, if only I had called this person, my life would be dramatically different. Yeah, but how? How would your life be different? What would it look like? Well, I'd be happy. You don't know what you don't know, man. If you're crossing the street and you're hit by a car, if only I had not crossed that street, my leg wouldn't be broken, I wouldn't be missing this event, I wouldn't be in so much pain. Maybe getting hit by that car at that intersection stopped you from getting hit by a truck two blocks up the street when you would have died. Maybe because your leg is broken, now you're not driving because you can't control the pedals, and if you had been driving, then you would have hit somebody else and killed somebody else. You, you don't know. Or maybe your life actually would have been better. But we can't, we can't live the lives that we, that we imagine. We have to live the lives that, that we have. And so. When you say the, that your life is flowing, though, think about that image, though. Where's the, where's the, where's the river going? Let me see. This is a big area. Yeah, something bigger. Where is it coming from? A mountain What's that? It's a mountain Mountain top. And it's coming, it's flowing from, from a mountain top that we never see. A lot of times life is like that. Like, ever think about the crazy ass circumstances that brought to that brought you to where you are right now? Mm -hmm. I know it's rhetorical in some cases, I know most people don't think about that kind of thing, but if you think about like for example, how it is that your parents met? And there's probably some strange story about how they just came across each other in some weird, strange way. And if not them, your grandparents. And if not your grandparents, maybe your great grandparents. But there was some, you know, just <clears throat> some off chance circumstance. Maybe a, a light that turned green instead of red, or a bus that got delayed somewhere. And it's that little thing that, that brought two, these two people together, but it's so far upstream from. From, from where we're living right now, we just don't even see it. And then that river just flows, but does this ever seem to stop? It does, of course. And then you think of your life this way. You can try to dam the river, but it won't dam forever. You, know, you can try to slow down this process of, of time and life, but it's going to flow. The river's going to flow. Your life is going to pass. The river's going to pass. I guess the question is kind of like, how much can you put into the river? How much can you do in it? Some rivers flow faster than others. <clears throat> Interesting, man. Yesterday, you guys saw the news yesterday? No. <laughs> Rhetorical question, you know. <laughs> um, um, someone mentioned the news to me and said that they saw a, a ghost on there. And I went back and watched it. I never really watched it. And I saw um, one of my former students who uh, committed suicide. She's, uh, she was in, the, in an old news broadcast from 2015, I think it was. And I saw it. I was like, I know her, you know? And that was a life that flowed really fast. I went by really fast. She was 19. Um, and then there's some that, are, that, you know, river flows real slow. And so weird thing is you can't even tell, like, what the, like, there doesn't even seem to be a rhyme or reason to it. It isn't like, you know, the more you do and the faster you live, then, then the longer you live or the shorter you live. It just kind of happens that way. Yeah? Mm. Others, yeah. So when he says something about like getting trapped, and I thought I don't know why, but I I thought of like a door, and that's like a trip wire right there. Like, you can trip over that wire, and you can fall somewhere else. But once you go through that door, you, you're gonna see the wire and step over it. So you're gonna learn something no matter what. Yeah, and even if you even if you trip over the wire again in the future, you're doing it knowingly. Like you knew it was there, and you you know, you know maybe you'll try to avoid it, but it'll be a weird thing where you. Well, it's just misstep weirdly because it's like you're trying so hard to, yeah, you're trying so hard to, to not get tripped up that then you do. Yeah, and you can't unsee it. That sounds familiar. What's that? That sounds familiar. Right? <laughs> so you're always going to be growing. The question is into what? Into what? Do you ever see, I don't know, like a plant growing in the middle of a river? <clears throat> Probably not, because it never has a chance to. You know, if, a, if something did take, if, if a, some kind of a plant, let's just say, did take root, you might say, well, it never gets sun or whatever, so it never gets the things it needs to grow. Um, what happens to it? Well, it gets washed downstream. It gets washed away. It gets washed down life, just like people. Or, you know, whether we grow, so whether we, we take root or not, we're still going to go downstream. Now, if you want to survive the river, what do you have to do? Well, you have to have a deep root system. 
You have to have something that goes under the soil that can anchor you to the earth. And then, as you grow up out, as the water rushes by, depending on how powerful the river is, it will, it will, you, know, you, you won't get washed away, as I'm saying. You'll be able to grow up through that. And as hard as the river might be swelling past you, as hard as it might be knocking you, you can still grow past that and grow up, up, up until eventually you're out of the water. But you have to have a deep root system. Without deep roots, you just get washed away. And the same is true about life generally. You know, if you don't have a deep root system, if you don't have a deep belief system, if you don't have a deep something that anchors you to life, or something deep that anchors you to a relationship, or something deep that anchors you to your, your work, to people around you, or whatever, then you're going to get washed away by it. And that's easy to happen because you don't have any control. The only control that you have in life is how deep your root system goes. You can't control how, how fast the water rages around you. You can't control if the sun comes out tomorrow or not, or if it's rain. You can't even control if people show up to the river, like I'm sure we were all little kids who would find grass growing somewhere and just pull it out for no good reason. The stuff that didn't get pulled out was the stuff that the root system was too deep. You guys ever see weeds grow? I have a lot of weeds in my front yard right now. Whenever it rains, just these massive weeds grow up in my front yard. Um, they're really easy to take out though. You put a pair of gloves because sometimes there's little spikes in them, but you put a pair of gloves and you go out there and you just, not even hard, because weeds don't have a deep root. Weeds just a really shallow root, and they grow super fast, super high. You know? But they come out really easily. But then there are those other ones, those plants, they're just tenacious, man. They've got this deep root system, and then maybe they'll even intertwine with other root systems. And when you can do that, literally, they're hard to pull out. When you do it metaphorically with another person, you both have a deep root system that somehow connects under the earth, and you guys intertwine and it makes it twice as hard to pull you out. So maybe find people with whom you can intertwine your deep root systems, and then you'll be very difficult to, to pull out, and it'll be very difficult to, to move in life. You know? And then that's a person that you can stand with. You just have to be careful that the root systems don't choke each other. That's what weeds do. Their roots will go through and choke out other, other plants, and there'll be, a, there'll be an, a, a net negative in your garden. I guess fill your garden with, with things that can connect roots symbiotically without choking each other and make the garden more beautiful. I like that. That's good. Yeah. It's crazy. That's life. Life is suffering. So I have a chance. Yes. You tell me. Okay. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then again, it, we, we, we speak in these cliches, and this is part of the, the problem. We say, well, you have to, to get up and keep moving forward and, and, do, and do better, do good. We, don't, we have to know what good and better are. And I don't know how much time most of us spend trying to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, even, even in the famous uh, Andrew Robinson's uh, movie, at the end, he actually meets himself. Yeah, he does. He meets himself. He meets himself. He meets his future self. And he's a really smart inventor. And he makes a lot of things. And he tells the museum yourself, he's like, look at all of my failures. He literally has a museum of his failures. Shit. And he just sounds keeps... familiar. <laughs> I'm thinking of that in terms of the eternal recurrence that we talked about with Nietzsche, where you go back and revisit your whole life. You were here last time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Imagine that. Like, you get one wish and you're like, I want to meet future me. Like, I want to meet the me in 10 years. And then the genie's like, yeah, you're not here. <laughs> there is no future you. Well, okay, okay, well, can I meet future me from like a year from now? No. Look, Mary, we'll give you another wish. <laughs> or you can make, or you can see it as a good thing, or a good thing as like, oh, look, new way to learn. Yeah, I can, I can. Yeah, but, but, but this is the thing, man. It's like, and I, and I mean this with, with, with all earnestness. We have to, we, we, at some point, we have to, we have to give up our hope for a better past. Meaning that, if you might say like, okay, well, you know, oh my God, if only I had called this person, my life would be dramatically different. Yeah, but how? How would your life be different? What would it look like? Well, I'd be happy. You don't know what you don't know, man. 
You know, it's kind of like if you're crossing the street and you're hit by a car, you might think you know, your leg gets broken. Man, if only I had not crossed that street, my leg wouldn't be broken, I wouldn't be missing this event, I wouldn't be in so much pain. Maybe getting hit by that car at that intersection stopped you from getting hit by a truck two blocks up the street when you would have died. Or maybe if you hadn't broken your leg, you'd have been doing something else in your life that would have caused, some, would have caused you to, to harm somebody else in some other way. Who knows? Maybe because your leg is broken, now you're not driving because you can't control the pedals. And if you had been driving, then you would have hit somebody else and killed somebody else. You, you don't know. Or maybe your life actually would have been better. Yeah, but we can't, we, we can't live the lives that we, that we imagine. We have to live the lives that, that we have. And so, you know, we, you know the, sometimes the things that might seem like mistakes, or they might seem like terrible errors, and they might have been mistakes, they might have been terrible errors, but they might have also saved you from something far worse. We just don't know. And you can go crazy with those permutations. You can go crazy with those permutations. I think back to like when my, when my mom had a heart attack and she died. I sh I, I, when, she, when that happened, I was supposed to be with her. But I wasn't because something came up and I went and did something else. My dad didn't know CPR. I did. Who knows? Maybe if I'm there, she stays alive. But then again, maybe if she stays alive, she has terrible health problems, worse than she already had after that. Who knows, maybe it was a merciful death. I don't know. Maybe it was the worst thing that ever happened in my life. I don't know. And you can't know. All you can do is move forward and make the best of, what, of the situation that you have right now. You know, we can't look around all the time when something goes wrong and, and find out who's guilty or who's responsible or you know, who's, whose fault things are. Sometimes things just aren't. You know? And even if they're not, and we find out who's responsible, we find out whose fault it is, it doesn't make anything better. It just compounds the suffering. And so, questions, comments, complaints, criticisms, critiques?